Hey guys, this is Casey Ferris. Thanks for checking out another one of my videos. This video is actually kind of a follow-up or a part two to last week's video, which is how to move a project from Premiere into Resolve and keep all the cuts and get it ready for grading and that type of thing. After I posted that, I got a lot of questions and comments saying, hey, can you please post a tutorial of how to actually bring things back into Premiere because I don't know what to do now. This is how I do it. It's not the only way to do it. This just seems to be the easiest way for me. I have all my clips here and I just really quickly went through and kind of gave it a warm grade. It's not perfect, okay, so don't be hating, but let's say everything is perfect and that's the way that you want. This is how I do it. So I go over to the Deliver tab, and since I'm on a PC, I'm again going to render Cineform because it's my favorite codec. It's a really high quality codec, and it can be read by anybody with just a free codec download. It's awesome. I'm gonna do this as individual source clips. Now, if you want to, you can render everything out as one big clip and there's nothing wrong with doing that. It's just nice for me to have it split up sometimes if I wanna change things around a little bit more. So I do individual source clips, video format, I'll do QuickTime, codec. I'm gonna go down to Cineform YUV 10 bit and compression quality is best. Render at source resolution you can do if you want to, but it's 1920 by 1080 at 23.976, so that works out fine. I'm not gonna worry about audio because I already have audio in Premiere. And then under more options, there's pixel aspect ratio, video data level, Cineform YUV 10 bit. I haven't found video data level to do anything. It doesn't actually change anything. If you use YUV 12 bit, it does actually change it. If you're doing an output for broadcast, say, you wanna pick video, or if it's for the web, go with data. Under file, let's pick a good file name, and I can give this a file prefix if I want to, but I think I'm just gonna say, use source file name, and what that's gonna do is take this render file name and it's going to make each clip have that file name plus some numbers added to it. Render to, I'm gonna hit browse, and tell it where to render. So I'm gonna find a place where I want this render to live and I'm gonna add a new folder and call it graded. Hit okay. And all of my clips are gonna go in that folder. So that's pretty much all we need to do. If you're rendering Cineform, just say best and pick your resolution, your frame rate and tell it where to go. All right, so I got my files going where they need to go and I'm gonna twirl down more options and none of this really matters, but I am gonna click render unique file names. If you don't do this, it's going to render the first clip and then the second clip is just gonna overwrite the first clip and the third clip is gonna overwrite the second clip. And so at the end, you'll have one clip and it will be the last clip in your timeline, which happens to be black, so that's useful. So we don't wanna do that. Let's say render unique file names, and that will make sure that each one of these clips is its own file name and it doesn't overwrite anything, which is just super nice. And since I have these settings the way I want, I'm gonna make a preset out of them by hitting create, and I'll call this Cineform for Premiere. Hit okay, and that'll save all of my settings into this preset, which I can navigate by clicking this little down arrow, and I can go through all the presets and you just select one and hit load and it will load up all of your goodies. Now what I'm gonna do is select all clips. This little buddy right here, make sure to click him. And I usually just click this as a precaution because sometimes what will happen is it will randomly decide that it wants to select just like three or four clips. And it's kind of hard to tell just looking at this that there's just a couple clips that are selected. How you can tell is this little bar right here but rather than go and search for that, I always just say select all clips because I almost always want to render everything in the timeline. And then I'm gonna hit add to render queue. So that's gonna add all of these to the render queue. And when I hit start render, it's gonna start rendering each one of those clips individually as a QuickTime file. Now that my clips are rendered, I could just bring these back into Premiere, but let me show you what happens when I do that. So I'll switch back over to Premiere and I'll import my footage here, which is under graded all individual clips, that looks great. So I'll just click graded and import that folder. And when you import the whole folder, it goes, oh my goodness, nothing worked. Don't worry, these are just the little weird files that Resolve uses. You don't need them, just hit okay. And if I twirl down graded, here I have all of my clips and they happen to be in alphabetical order. The cool thing about that is I can grab my first clip and shift click my last clip and drag them on top of my ungraded clips. And the idea is that if I just put those in the layer above, then I can always turn them off and on and see a before and after. I can go back to my original clip, whatever I need to do, but I have my graded footage all lined up and it's really easy to see if it doesn't line up. So if you have a simple project that doesn't have any fades, this works super well. Just 
drop it in, works great. I use it all the time, it's awesome. The problem is when you have a cross dissolve like I have here, things get a little weird. And so this pushed these clips down like this. And so what I could do is go through and like try and fix it and kind of line it up. And for, you know, something simple like this, it doesn't take too long to do that. So I can fix it pretty quickly and that works just fine. So if you just have one crossfade, that might just be an easy fix for you. But there's a slightly more pro way to bring all these clips in. So what I'm gonna do is select all of these and delete them. And I'm gonna delete my graded footage from here. And I'm gonna go back to Resolve. So in Resolve, now that I have all of my clips rendered, I can go back to my Edit tab and I can go up to File and Export AAF XML. And when I do that, it's gonna export an XML that Premiere can read that links to all of the new rendered clips, which is pretty cool. So I'm gonna put that in a good place and I'm gonna make an XML file and hit Save. And now I can switch back to Premiere, navigate to my XML and hit Open. And what that will do is bring in all of my clips and lay them out really nice in a timeline. And it even adds the fade, so that's awesome. So from there, easy thing to do is just select all of these, hit Control C and target a track here, Control V, and look at that. Everything's all lined up, it looks beautiful, and didn't have to fix anything, it just works. So that's especially useful if you have a much bigger, more complicated project than I do. Now that I have all of my graded footage in here, I can turn on my titles again. And from here, I can work on audio, I can add more graphics if I need to, and eventually I can just render it like I would anything out of Premiere. So there's a simple way to bring your clips from Resolve into Premiere. I hope that helps you guys. If you like this, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments below. And of course, if you want more color grading tutorials, post-production tutorials, uh, girls standing on the edge of a city tutorials, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm Casey Ferris. Thanks for checking this out. I'll catch you next time.